Don't mind the snoring, my dogs are asleep. Hey everybody, Linda aka The Gamer Girl here, and this is a response to MT Shark 7. He did a response and I thought it was a really intriguing list of questions, so we're gonna start off with question number one, which is what console or handheld that was discontinued did you wish would have made it to the limelight? And that is the Atari Panther. Uh, for those who don't know, there was another console that was going to be released after the Atari Jaguar, and that one was called the Panther. I think they were going to keep doing a theme of, like, vicious cats. And I wanted to see what was going to happen because I like Atari and I wanted them to keep going. It's one of those things where you don't know what's going to happen with the consoles, and I like any competition, so... I didn't really like the look and the feel of the controller for Jaguar. I was hoping that they would have fixed that and fixed the, you know, the controller. And hopefully maybe the Panther would have had the same inputs as the Jaguar. And then we could have used that controller for the Jaguar. That's my main concern about that was I hoped that something would happen along the lines where we got a new controller that would be functioning for the Jaguar. And that's usually what had happened was... Genesis was the same for Atari, so if you couldn't use a certain controller, you could swap it, flip it, you know, and, and the pins were the same. So that was my hope, that we could have gotten the controller that was viable, usable for my taste. For me, controllers are the main focal point of consoles, so you want to have a good controller. Now for the second question, that was, do you prefer to listen to music when you're gaming and what do you listen to? And depends on the game. Some games I like the soundtrack and I watch and play the whole game the way it's meant to be played with the, like GTA or uh, Saints Row. They have radio, they have different sounds playing while you're watching cutscenes and different things like that. So for that, I don't listen to different music, but for like say, uh, Fortnite or if I'm playing a consistent game where it's constantly the same noises after a while I kind of want to put some music on so I'm all over the place with my music preferences. I don't have like a set number now mind you I don't listen to like maybe folk music as much but I'm into like hip-hop rock uh, Give me some hip like soul R&B you know, 90s is where I was, so if any 90s song that I like pops on, I'll listen to that for sure. But I don't have like a playlist going. Um, I might listen to some YouTube at the same time. If I'm watching, I'll watch a stream or I'll watch somebody's videos or something like that going. And I'm dueling, you know, doing different things at the same time, multitasking. Even though I kind of like have the person's video on Lurk, I'm listening, but I'm not like fully responding and then afterwards I'll pause the game and comment but I think for the most part it's just I let the game play itself until like an hour into it. We're on to question number three and that is what's your least favorite generation of gaming? Um, I kind of have to agree with MT Shark 7. Uh, the Pong clones and the first generation when it's like original first first generation of like a lot of the clone consoles that were not really like they were like mock-ups of Pong like There's only so much I can play on Pong So that would have to be that because every other generation I grew up with and I played the Atari 2600 5200 7800 you know, I played all those and I liked those games, but for me if I had to choose I really not got into Odyssey. I really did not get into Pong as much as like the next person who grew up with it. I mean, yeah, many people had them, but for me, I didn't. I didn't have those because it was a lot of money to spend to buy Pong consoles and all this other stuff. So I kind of just went with whatever was available, which was the NES, Super Nintendo, or PlayStation or whatever I had. So. I don't really have much to say other than first generation maybe because it's kind of hard to choose when there was great games throughout each generation so far. The next question is if you could make your own video game what would it be and what kind of genre and stuff like that. So for me I would have a couple games in mind. Uh, the first one is kind of like an end of the world zombie game where it has a butterfly effect. Instead of like it's linear, like all the zombie games are mostly linear. Like there's not very many open world, not very many like other than Dead Rising where you can pick and choose what you want to do first, but eventually you have to stick to the story. 
otherwise it doesn't flow. So I would like to see a butterfly effect zombie game for once, you know? What you do affects the game. How many people survive? What's going on? It's not just, oh, that person died. Oh, well, it's like, it's actually going to affect the game. Like, if you don't let that person survive, if you just say, ah, oh, screw him, I'm done, he will die. You will need him later on in the story. So you're going to have to do a different scenario to get that person who was a good, like, mechanic. You need him now, but he's dead. So what do you have to do? Okay, you have to go here. You have to go get this. You have to get parts. You have to do it yourself. So... It's no longer an easy fix that's going to be him doing it. Like, you need to get it done. And the second idea for a video game would have been just to make video games of my buddies. You know, Die Hard, J-Love, T-Belly, Megadan, Solinate, Phil. Um, I would make a video game of, you know, just like in, in general of like Captain, you know, and, and just have like story, like... J-Love, of course, would be a platformer where she slaps people. <laughs> T-Belly would be a, a clone where he gets possessed by Wario and ha becomes Wario. And he, have to, he has to get out of being Wario, even though he likes it. Uh, Phil would be a beat-em-up. He would be fighting as a beat-em-up character and or a Contra. Um, for Nate, it would be G&G. &G. He would definitely be G&G. &G. Um, and then uh, for the Mega Powers, it would be, yeah, it'd be just a console, like, you know, Contra, where it's both of them dueling, and then one's red and one's white. That That's that's what I would have made. I would have made a game of all my buddies, <laughs> different people. Like, there's so much that I would have thought of. And then I would just made it into, like, a, a 10 in 1, you know, kind of thing, where a uh, Die Hard would be a shooter, you know, and then you would have Die Hard be um, Space Invaders. Because his, his logo was Space Invaders. So you'd have that. And I would put, like, uh, Die Hard, Jen, you know, all of them. And then list them in, in line where they could be whatever they want to be. That would be dope to have, like, you know, all the games you can think of. Um, that's pretty much what I've thought of, like, throughout time. But I don't have a programming in my blood. So it's <laughs> not going to be an easy do, like. I would have to like figure out where to go and what to do, but yeah, that's just some thoughts on what I would plan to do. Nobody's still my idea. And the final thing is, what three things would you like to change about the industry as far as like gaming in general? Okay, so the first one would be that they would stop releasing broken games. You want people to pre-order, you want us to all be gung-ho about stuff, but yet you keep bringing out broken games. Games that are not playable, games that are not good. Haven't we learned from gaming history that that doesn't work? Hello, Atari? Gaming, video game crash? Anything? Ring a bell? I mean, it was around the 80s. Not that far away. <laughs> but we yet forget and we say, screw it, let's just release a game that's broken. Cyberpunk was horrible. It was glitchy. It was a hot mess. There's been a couple of games that I've bought where there was day one patches and I wasn't able to play my game again, even though I downloaded it and it went through. And that's number two on the list is how much we download on a regular basis. It's ridiculous where I'm playing a game and it won't let me play because I need to update, but I don't want to update because I need to finish something. Well, you gotta do it now or you can't play. So basically you're, you're pigeonholding me into a, a corner where I have to update. And that's taking up so much memory. Can you not do that? And number three is just the limited quantities of so much stuff that is high demand. Like you're making the market great for scalpers. All the, the companies that do that. So like Nintendo, Sony and Microsoft and a bunch of other companies that just don't make a limit. There's no limit. You don't need to do that. I've said this before. Why don't you have a pre-order system where if you want to pre-order, you can pre-order and then just set a couple on the side and then don't do the limit, you know? Like, I know plenty of times where there was a game that was out that people wanted and they just said, oh, the copies are gone. Everything's done. Sorry, you can't do that. It's like... But yet later on, 
you release it the same freaking way you did before. Why not just release it? Say, hey guys, it's gonna be on the stores. Here's you go. And just have like, you have to sign up with a verified account that you cannot have multiple addresses. That's all I'm asking, you know, can we just like do that? Where I know that so-and-so bought 10 copies of a limited thing. Why don't we just do that for sure? So uh, my ranting is over and that was the five questions that I responded to. So if you would like to respond, this is an open tag. Uh, nobody was really tagged in this kind of thing. It was just empty shark. Seven decided, you know, I'm going to respond to the questions and it sounded like a fun idea. Made me think of like, the video game one was was really fun to think of. Like, I was thinking about that for a while and why don't I just throw that out in the air and hopefully it comes to fruition where, you know, I wouldn't mind playing the video game of all my buddies, you know? It's, it's one of those things where you need to have a video game of all your buddies and it's fun, like, even when I was younger, I used to think of, like, ways to, like, incorporate different things into books and stuff like that. Makes your brain think. We need more brain muscle power, so. If you want to respond, just tag me. Let me know that you made a video, and I'll definitely check it out for sure. So, thank you for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, hashtag yes, as always. Keep on gaming, stay safe out there, and I'll catch you next video. Peace. Linda the Gamer Girl, she's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Girl, she's here, she's playing games too.